What is arcade gaming? For us, the Retro Bros, it's a place called Time Zone. This place holds so many awesome memories for us, from when we were just little kids, going to the shops and getting our parents to drop us off while they went shopping. Stepping into this place as kids meant stepping into another world. The lights, the sounds, even the smell just had us so excited to be there. Arcades have changed quite a bit since we started going, but in saying that, we love that some of our favourite games are still around. Even though so many years have passed, we still love hitting up the arcades and reliving some of our favourite games. So we've asked a couple of mates from the YouTube gaming community to join us in this and share some of their arcade memories from when they were kids. So here it is, the Retro Bros Arcade Memories. One of my favourite childhood memories of arcade games is Super Sessions. Super Sessions went for two hours. Uh, they were usually held once a week and they were the best things to go to. They cost you $10 and you can play unlimited games. Uh, my friend Brian and I, uh, they used to start at 6 o'clock. They would go from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock and we would get there at 5 o'clock. We would get there one hour early just to line up to play that favourite game and we remember looking through the window when we didn't know the new arcade game was out. We saw like Mortal Kombat 3 and we're looking through the window and we didn't know it was there but we saw it through the window and we get so excited because actually Time Zone, the, the Time Zone, the arcade where we went to, uh, the place, that was actually closed like you couldn't you couldn't go in so you basically had to wait outside it was locked and you waited a whole hour uh, to, to go in there and uh, it was so exciting we'd meet up there at five o'clock and uh, we just we just waited and waited and we saw the new arcade machine and and go in there and there was nothing better than uh, just playing games with your friends play NBA Jam Killer Instinct uh, Mortal Kombat Daytona the dual arcade um, it was just one of the most funnest uh, things ever. Two hours, and you just had unlimited video games for two hours. It, it was incredible. It was incredible. Um, back in 88, 87, it would have been. He's old. At um, Luna Park in Melbourne, there's the arcade bit. We had all your arcade machines. Then over to the side, there was a shooting gallery of white gun games, pellet guns and stuff. And there was one stand-up arcade cabinet there in the light gun part and it was Double Dragon and I'd never seen it before. Put in my 20 cents, started playing it and that was it. Like, it just blew my mind like how good that game was. And every time we went back to Luna Park I'd just keep going over to that um, arcade cabinet all by itself. And there was no one, never anyone else playing it, and I just want to play it all day. Just kept asking my parents for more money to play it, and the the, the graphics on it, like it looked like a cartoon to me back then. Like it was so awesome, so bright colours, and the music was so good. And just ever since then, like Double Dragon has been one of my favourite arcade games, and just the memory of just finding it, and it felt like it was mine because no one else would ever play it and it was just awesome. When me and Josh were, I don't know, 10 years old and 8 years old, 
somehow we're up in, I think it was Perth Station or Fremantle Station, uh, one of the train stations anyway, and we were going to some sort of event, it might have been like a theme park we were going to, um, and I remember the train station, we saw a four player NBA Jam, and, and it was like 20 cents or 40 cents a game, and we were like, dude, we've got to play this, it's NBA Jam. So we, we chucked our 40 cents in and we were smashing it out. And you know, at the very start where you've got to put your initials in, uh, you know, your three letter initials, <laughs> I put my initials, which is uh, B E B, and it's spelled Beb, obviously. Um, and then Josh, for some weird, weird reason, just pumped in a whole bunch of uh, uh, letters and it ended up being E E E. He just mashed it. And I said, that's pretty funny, man. Like, from now on, no matter what, how old we are, you've got to stay with those three letters, E, E, and I'll stay with Bev. And to this single day, to this day, we always remember that. And every time we're at the arcades or, or in a game that we're playing at home, we put in those exact same initials, and he puts in Triple E, and we always talk about that memory. So that, that's actually pretty funny to, uh, to think about that now, so. Yeah. All right, one of my best memories about arcades machines was I'd moved into the new area and stuff as a family we all moved and it was where I met Eddie and all that yep. and new new body didn't know the area or anything you know as you do when you move to a new place and mum's like get on your bike go go down the road there and suss out there's a group of shops won't you suss it out there might be something up there a park even on the way so anyway got on the bike cruised up and um, yeah, just a bunch of shop snapper. There was this one shop and it had nothing on the windows at all, like no writing of what it was or anything like that. And I poked my head in and there was just a whole row of arcade machines all the way just down the wall, man. It had like POW, um, Gallagher, um, Pac-Man, you name it. It had all old school games and that. So um, yeah, went in and stuff. And what it was, it was like a bunch of old dudes um, chilling back and stuff, smoking cigars, playing cards, but it also had like this rat ass row of arcade machines. So I went there, played credits, kept going back, back and back till it closed down eventually and that. Mm. But yeah, moved to a new area, bang, fresh. It was awesome, man. My favourite arcade game of all time, without a doubt, without a doubt, without even hesitating to even say it, would be... I mean, that game is still in arcades today, and I'll tell you why, because that game is uh, amazing. And, it, and it's got three tracks, so simple, beginner, advanced, expert, you get to choose automatic or manual. There's nothing else added to the game where you see like driving games these days, you have your own insert cards and you can choose 40 different cars and like 100 tracks or something like that. Daytona nailed it on the spot, pure racing high speed, still needs tactics to do the corners correctly and even today, even playing this game thousands and thousands of times, you can still make mistakes, you can still miss a turn just by that much and you, and you land on the grass and you, and you slow down and that could cost you um, the match and uh, look, that game just brings back so many memories and uh, Brian and I, we are... Uh, we did this thing one time, we did like the best out of seven races or something like that and it was unbelievable. We basically, no, was, I think it was out of three races and what it was, the first one, like, was a dead heat. It was actually, literally, a dead heat. Someone had to give first and someone had to give second. Um, and the second one was a dead heat, it was two in a row. And the third one, Doggo, Brian, um, took it out, but it was by one hundredth of a second, so over three races, it was one hundredth of a second in the time in the time difference. I mean, like that's just that's just unbelievable. Like that will never ever happen again. Um, but like just those kinds of feelings with, with Daytona. Um, such a simple game, such a classic, well-made game, and you know what? They they nailed it on the head. It's fun to play with your friends. It's easy to play. It's actually really easy to play if you go automatic or manual. You know what? Like that game, 100%, I will still spend money. I, I could probably tell you, in my whole lifetime, I've probably spent, I could have probably bought 
eight Daytona arcade machines. I think I've probably spent about $15,000 to $20,000 in my lifetime. I'm talking about my whole life here on that game if you added up all those $2 coins because every time I walk past a time zone, I'll always stop in and play Daytona. So that game, 100% the best game of all time in the arcade. Our favourite arcade machine is the same for both of us. Oh, for sure, man. And it is Street Fighter 2. And that's Street Fighter 2 as well. Mm. Many of Street Fighter 2s. And the reason for me was like Double Dragon, a big favourite. There's so many, like even Gallagher back in the day and that. But Street Fighter 2, just for the amount of money that I put into it, the amount oh. of hours playing it. Yeah, the amount of hours wagged in school to play it, mm. various other ways <laughs> and stuff. But we just fell in love with that game, man, wasn't it? Yeah. Just, it was a total new experience of arcade game where you actually one-on-one -on -one fighting, rad moves, sweet, clear moves. The graphics were oh. so good. Yeah. And uh, and even, like, the sound of the Hardukens and, and it, like, the elephants in... Um, Del Sim stage. The Del Sim stage and stuff like that. And also, like, it just appeared one day around the place. Like, there was no internet or anything back then. Uh -huh. So, everyone didn't know everything before it came out. No. Stuff just popped up. And also, like, when um, we first started hanging out, Gav knew how to do a couple of the moves and stuff. And you had to do them all. Knew like one or something. Nah, all of them, man. Probably didn't know any, and so he taught me like how to do them, and then we would just Master. play all the time. The fish and chip shops, they were everywhere. The street mm. fighters, weren't they? Yeah. The video shops, yeah, everywhere. We go to the city to play it as well, just to suss out everywhere and shit. You know, mm. different machines have different skill levels and all that. It was just man, we've just fallen in love ever since, and. And when we'd play it, we'd, we'd be in there so long, like at the fish and chip shop, they'd start making us buy like, buy something to play it. To, like when they, we'd walk in, they'd go, you have to buy something. Yeah, otherwise we'd hang all day, man, yeah. wouldn't we? So we'd buy like one Doom Sim and then play for two <laughs> hours. <laughs> True story, mm. seriously. Another, another great memory I have from, uh, from when we were younger, um, probably into our teenage years when I think Mortal Kombat 3 came out and around the same time Killer Instinct came out. And both games were friggin' amazing and absolutely awesome. They brought in the whole combos and, and, and awesome fatalities and it was so hard to, to rock up and actually remember them on the arcades uh, from, 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 your, from your memory. So I came up with a sweet idea where I went home and I, and I, and I wrote out little pages of all the combos all the fatalities of each single character and folded them up into like a little booklet, if you will. And they actually became pretty popular because I told a few mates at high school and I actually ended up selling a couple of them for like five bucks a piece. Which is which was but at the time that was like that was awesome. It was almost like I was doing a sneaky drug deal after school or before school or something. Absolute pleasure of a video to make. Uh, Absolutely, this is uh, 
uh, number two of documentary. Number two, and uh, this this idea was all generated by Doggo in the first instance, where he wanted to talk about people and bring out the true emotion and passion about about video games and that bring was, bring their memories to life by yeah, talking about it. And that's what I love. I love that. And now, it, the first video turned out to be a massive success. It was, it was. And to be one of our most viewed videos um, by, by the YouTube community. And everyone loved it. There's so much positive feedback from it. So, here yeah. we are again with attempt number two at it. And, you know. We're very happy. We're very happy. Because it's uh, bringing out that, that raw emotion of uh, video is. gamers. It's actually the other side of video games, actually. When you think about it, you know, you play video games to get that feeling and to enjoy video games. but. Sometimes when you're actually playing, you, you do not take the emotions and the yeah. feelings that you, you take it for granted, you guess, and then... Yeah. When you go back and you think about your memories of when you were younger and the yeah. feelings you had from it, I reckon it's just awesome. It's, it's awesome. awesome to talk about it and let it out. And to reminisce, mm. like you bring back some, uh, when uh, Doggo and I, we just talked about it and, uh, you know, we used to go to the, the places all the time and to bring back some of those memories and everybody will have those memories about arcade places. It's um, If you've gone to arcade places, you will have memories because they, for me, they, they do create memories where you might get the highest score or yeah. you beat your friend or it takes you ages to master the one part of the game yeah. and then you finally go back five weeks later and you know you beat you beat the game. And uh, I think all those people have those kind of memories. You know, it's, it's a very, very special place and, and the feel Feel, the, isn't it? It's all about the feels. Let's wrap it up. I'd like to. Um, that was a beautiful video. It was good. It was great. It was a good video. Um, I'd like to say thank you to all our subscribers, viewers, people that helped us with this video, and to you, Josh. Happy Christmas. Yep. And happy uh, New Year. thank you very much. And uh, I'd like to um, say all the same. A big thank you to you know all the subscribers that have been there from from um, the beginning and, and even coming on board now. Um, all, all the all the video game community at large, um, just supporting video games in general and, and retro games, and, and just the community out there helping each other. You know, it's, you know that that community kind of feel um, when it when it comes to this kind of thing. And and Doggo and I will always be making videos because we love doing it anyway, and we're so grateful um, for all the support that we get from you guys. It, it means a lot to us, and we're and we're gonna keep we're gonna keep doing videos. So, for me. A big Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and a big Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to this guy and what will 2015 bring for Retro Bros? I don't know. Who knows? I don't know, but it's going Exciting to be times. a lot of the same fun, a lot of the same competition and uh, and, and perhaps more documentaries too. So perhaps. thank you very much and uh, we look forward to seeing you uh, in 2015. So Happy New Year, Happy Merry New Christmas, Christmas. enjoy. See you. Christmas. Bye.
Doggo's taking a Doggo's taking a drink. He's loving life. How do you feel? I feel uh, a bit wet. Yeah. And uh, still got my shoes on. He's still got the shoes on. Look at that. He's still wearing his shoes. But you know what? It was a nice hot day today. So yeah. that felt pretty damn good. And when are you joining the Olympic team? Um, sometime. <laughs> <laughs> he's wet. Look at this. He's soaked. He's absolutely soaked. He's gonna have a hot shower. He's going in. He's opening the gate. Oh. Tell you what, he's done. He's done. Look at him going. He's got. He's got a cut. Cut. 